Afternoon, guys. Welcome to what is episode one of uh, MCL TV. We're here to discuss uh, everything CX with the upcoming Fields of Joy. My name's Dan. Um, I'm here with the man, Scott Rotino from Over Yonder Giant Racing. Today's been brought to you by the lovely crew at Capital Sparkling and Horvath's Financial Advisors. Um, Scotty, what's going on? Talking CX today, welcome. Mate, good, yeah. Look, we, um, we're obviously in the midst of uh, rounds uh, of early rounds of Fields of Joy, which are arguably sort of the, the home of cycling, cyclocross in Australia. Mate, um, I think it's the only uh, dedicated circuit in the whole of Australia. 100%, and they do a pretty good job out there with our Sunbury <laughs> Cycling Club. Um, look, as we ease into it, we wanted to you know, touch on that the, the crew at Fields of Joy have put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, I don't know if you guys saw today that they've actually got about a semi-trailer load of snow fresh from Mount Buller, mate. How do you reckon uh, that'll come on to you? Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Hopefully it stays cold enough throughout the day so the snow actually stays fresh. I think it's, I think it's meant to stay, uh, stay pretty fresh. I think it's meant to be uh, overnight of about four or five degrees. Yeah, so perfect. I think they're going to layer it on for you. Perfect. Um, so you're going to have a bit of mud out there, I reckon. Still but, a mystery um, as to where the snow's actually going to be as well. Well, they post up a bit of a Facebook Live if you head to our... Um, if you head to our broadcast, we'll be shared it from Fields of Joy. CX is their Facebook page. And um, it looked like there was a fair bit being dumped uh, right at the top of the hill, I reckon. <laughs> Perfect, right when you get to the top. Mate, um, look, we just wanted to touch on sort of how you got into CX before we brief a little bit of the, um, of the CX round. Perfect. Um, how did you get involved? So I had, a, I had a second road bike, and I was using that as a bit of a commuter. And, and uh, Jules, or Julian Spiller, who loves making you spend money, was like, why don't you get a CX bike, man? And I was like, oh, I don't even know what CX is. And so I ended up getting a CX bike just to commute on, and I was like, oh, I better try this racing thing. And yeah, and that was that. Mate, uh, what was your first sort of CX race? Like, when did you sort of make your debut, or were you a bit nervous, you just sort of rolled down with your mates? Because a few, you know, we see, um, you know, mostly on sort of Instagram and stuff that, it seems to be this Monday night crew, which I think uh, you got disbanded, <laughs> and uh, and sort of Wednesday for another day. <laughs> Wednesday night with uh, with Paddy, yeah. um, another MCL guy, and you know, yeah. so where where did you sort of make the move? Like I'm I'm pretty good at it, or I just want to start racing. I was never thought that I was good at it. <laughs> um, the first ride I actually did on it off road was um, with Jules, and we bumped into um to Paul Vanderplug out on the trails, and that was just a really interesting experience. I think I went over the bars like two or three times. Just had no skills on the dirt, coming straight from road. So, um, so what's your probably favourite CX race that you've done? Is there is there one that sort of stands out, or do you like sort of the mountain climb events? I know that um, I think it was in Adelaide, or was it um, up the King Valley? Maybe that had the big water trough where I think the few front wheels sort of oh, made it was, off the edge. Yeah. So my favourite one I've ever done is probably uh, the Dirty Deeds of Darrow in the Parklands, and that was also the, the first race that I did there. I just remember the first race just going, what the hell have I got myself into? It was just, it was so brutal. Um, I'd never practiced getting on and off the bike, so that was a really interesting experience as well. But um, yeah, Darwin Parklands is probably my, my favourite course because of the crowd they had there. It's just incredible. Just right at the top of this really slippery hill. Yeah, yeah mate, um, I've had uh, Kip send in a very interesting photo that I think came off your Instagram. <laughs> Today, what CX is like with Scotty from uh, Greg Thorne, um, who sort of said, mate, we've got a few designers in the house with, uh, with cycling. Do you want to explain that one? Greg Thorne? Yeah, explain sort of what Greg's about. And <laughs> he, he's, he did race MCL CX in B grade, what which I think, it? Greg, we actually had a few, uh, we had a bit of a talk about that. I think he'd be bumped up to A grade with a handicap off the front, I think, next time. But So, uh, yeah, GT, is it? Just an all-round good guy, good designer, but absolute sandbagger. There is no way he should be racing B-grade. Um, well, we'll try and keep him out. <laughs> keep him out. You and uh, Hilson said the scene needs more cowbell. We've got a good crew here. I don't know if Ryan's got the cowbell. Oh, there's a cowbell in there. Um, mate, as we look forward to sort of towards this weekend, we do say a relative sort of farewell to a... Uh, a three-time national CX champion, Lisa Jacobs. She's um, obviously not racing, but there's a farewell ride to her. She, yeah. I think, probably between you know her and maybe Albie, they sort of really lifted. They they were one one of the first to really set yeah. that sort of bar. Absolutely. Know. Yeah. Even um, even at Dirty Deeds, uh, I was walking back up the hill and Lisa was like, "Oh, Scott, how are you going?" She's like, "Oh, nice, 
nice tyres, and she's like, what pressure are you running? She's like, no, nah, not good enough. And we ran like up to the pits, and she's got her electronic gauge, and she's like, just getting it down to the like the perfect PSI, and we just, yeah, no, the, her and Albie are just absolutely great for the sport. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think she might have missed um, through illness, I think, through the development day, but she seems to be all about really sort of giving back to, to sort of that CX community. Yeah, but. definitely. Um, yeah, well, she got she got a start and then, you know, went really well and went over to Europe and I think just the, the massive season, you know, from Australia to Europe got sick and just found it really hard to recover. Yeah, it sort of, it does take its toll. Um, guys, uh, Blake, um, can you tell me what makes a good CX course? What do you reckon, uh, what sort of makes a good CX course in, in your view? Obviously, we sort of tailored, I know that, um, so the MCL course sort of was tailored to a bit more of a, a road race base, mm -hmm. and we saw that with, um, well, probably not Beck, but, you know, we saw that with, um, I think it was Dylan Newell who won, um, to the stronger people, Fields of Joy apparently, you know, have a bit more of a mountain bike sort of feel. Um, sort of what course do you prefer, what makes a good course? Oh, for me, coming from a road background, I prefer a road course, but I think... So you're not too happy about Fields of Joy <laughs> with snow this weekend? Well, I haven't had a great relationship with Fields of Joy. Love the people out there. Uh, love, the, love the course to watch. It's bloody hard to ride. It's, um, it's pretty brutal. Uh, I had to work a lot on the on the technical skills to be able to get around there. I think with with courses, it, it really depends um, who you've got racing, what the terrain's like. It's it's good for the spectators to have the the road racing type courses, nice you know long straights where people can group up. It just makes exciting racing. But then fields of joy where it's all you can see everything from the one spot is pretty incredible as well. Um, what else we got, Andy? Kennelly, Andy, thanks for uh, thanks for making your comments, guys. It is live, so if you do want to comment, we'll try our best to answer them all. Does wearing skinny to work make the accounting faster? <laughs> Are you quicker in July when it's got to get done on the accounts? Uh, yeah, you? that's actually where I've just come straight from work. I've just finished month end reporting, so yeah, didn't wear the skin suit today, Andy. So it wasn't as quick. But you weren't too good on numbers because I think that we saw you fly past the. Uh, yeah, MCL HQ building. For some reason, I had 136 in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I um, down there, there was nothing there, so... Uh, Paddy, okay, Paddy. Um, would you prefer cowbells or air horns? I'd answer this very carefully because uh, I'm pretty intrigued as to what everyone will sort of bring down. You know what? I'm actually a big fan of the Boobie Zealot. There's a group out of, uh, out of Adelaide. <laughs> the old South African World Cup. Yeah, and the, these guys called Mate Cross Weird, and they've got these Boobie Zealots, and they, they blow those as you go past. So. <laughs> um, Andy, Allison, can I enter without a bike? It's going to be very hard, mate, but maybe one day we'll do CX running. Um, yeah, thank you for the love. Maybe Mount Beauty, where I was all running, that would have been that would have suited Andy. <laughs> uh, Blake, how do you measure power when dismounted? Is there actually what's the difference between power meters? Is there any sort of difference? Are they? Is it a different? Like obviously, is it a completely different power meter? Does it have to be further encased? No, I've got, I've, I run power max on both. Well, you can't really. I don't have it on the screen when I'm racing. It's more afterwards. I just have a look and see. Don't, how hard don't want to look how much you die. <laughs> I kind of just goes all over the place. It's more. You know what it, what it looks like as a total effort. Okay, um, we'll just get on to a couple of things. Uh, look, we spoke about Lisa Jacobs, but I last checked there was 113 elite women racing, which is absolutely phenomenal. Um, you know, I think for our race, we I had that's, that's total, yeah, total, total that's total, yeah, yeah that's total. Yeah. Um, look, we had we had 40, and it's, we thought that for we, we sort of sat back and went, well, 40, that's fantastic, and then. You know, we I saw Fields of Joy posted 113. That is just insane it's numbers, awesome. and yeah. it's so good to see them all sort of getting out. You know, it's really it's fantastic, and it's such a great spectator event it is. as well that you should get a few numbers down there. Yeah, it's really friendly type of racing as well. Like even if you you are coming last, nobody really knows where you're coming because you know it kind of all spreads out. And yeah, the the numbers for for girls this year has just been incredible. Um, we had big numbers coming down to Monday night CX before that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, the numbers are the numbers, especially in Victoria, that we get for the girls is really, really good. Um, mate, if we're going to sort of have a look at the elite women, um, you know, we've got Beck and Naomi Williams, and um, you know, Josie Simpson is having a bit of a quieter year this year than previous. Um, I think she sort of has admitted that that 2017 is going to return her focus back. There is one name in there. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, Peter Mullins. Peter Mullins. <laughs> we, yeah. I, you know, uh, under twenty three road race champion. 
road race champion, mountain bike Australian oh, champion. A bunch of, bunch of cross country. She might have won on the track when she was track. younger. I think under 23 on the track. Now, we made no sort of joke that this Fields of Joy course does suit mountain bikers. Yeah. How realistic are we that she's going to turn up to this round, win, head over to Adelaide and <laughs> probably get another couple of straps? Uh, I don't know. Team, team Willie Lock, they've been, uh, they've been absolutely dominating this year. Um, but another one to look out for is, is Mel Anset, and she actually won at Fields of Joy for the first round of the VIX, so she can never be um, discounted either. But Peter Mullins is a real unknown. And, and I suppose the thing with, um, with Nay and Beck is they, sort of, they, they are in a team and they do race that way, and they, they really proved that at, at MCLCX that, yeah. you know, that once Beck went, Pretty hard to get her back, yeah, and, and she wanted yeah. by an absolute mile, and, and I think they, they even had a puncture in the way. So, I mean, you know, you can't discount them, obviously, if it is a mountain bike. Of course, Peter Mullins is going to be a little bit more favourited to it. but she um, definitely have the technical skills, that's for sure. But that race is going to be an absolute corker. Um, looking forward to the elite men. Um, Mate, so that whole everywhere. top five, <laughs> and then you've got Ben Walker in there as well. The, the pick whole, the whole and, and yourself. Well, we're going to place it on you and Jules to go one, two, and Paul Redback. Three MCL. Uh, uh, we're pretty confident that, uh, on that. That Jay Spiller has been take, talking up his chances big time, but uh, he was supposed to actually be on here today, so he may actually be out tra- in secret cat. Yeah, secret training, secret training. He's you, good you just look at the look at the top, and it's like Jonglewood's been almost. Uh, I don't think he's been beaten this this season, except um, up in Brisbane, Chris Aitken almost turned himself inside out to. To get back on, I only finished sort of ten seconds down. But you've got, you know, Paul is back. He loves fields of joy. Um, Harry Carpenter on the road. He's he was really impressive up in Brisbane. And I, I suppose from the two, you know, you mentioned uh, you mentioned Chris um, from Focus Attacker. Yeah. So you've got Gary Milburn from uh, yep. Speedbug and Matt. A couple of new teams in there. Very Definitely. capable riders. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gary's he's looking great on the uh, on the Speedbug. Um, good looking bikes. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, um, Fame and Spears has got named a, a slow bargain. He, Greg told me. There, there was a. <laughs> I don't know who asked the question, but someone did ask a question um, whether he was. Uh, whether Andy Rogers, what do we reckon his chances were? I think he was in Men's B. Uh, men's Expert, which is, uh, which is those. It's an age group one for people that don't want to race elite or aren't old enough for Masters. Okay. So right. there's a bit of beef there between Greg Thorne and, and, and Andy, so that'll be a crack. It's been very public on there on the Instagram, I, I have noticed, public. which is fantastic. Um, guys, we've got um, well, shots fired against Matt Slowbargain. Slow um, Kip, you're, uh, you better be out there with the camera, mate. Um, Kirsty Baxter wrote in before, it's really looking forward to the women's race. Kirsty's just come back from a stint in, um, in France. And she's probably one of the really good people that, you know, we see so many photographers come down, but it's, it's so important to ensure, you know, from a club point of view, to ensure that your sponsorships get that sort of leverage and that exposure. And, you know, people like Kirsty and Andy and Kaz, they're sort of the same. Um, you know, Riley Wolf's been down and shot a lot. Um, Paul Spurling, ex Spurlo style. Um, you know, you've got Blake and uh, Ben Lehner and stuff like all these sort yeah, of people that come out lots of and sort of shoot. I think um, there's a guy called Ogram on, on yeah, Instagram Mark, and Mark's, Mark. Mark's, and, Mark's a great guy. You know, and it's just, you get through these events, you click on a hashtag and it's, and it's, it's the same pool of self appreciation if you're right. Yeah. Right? yeah. Right? You just sort through it. I know, that's why, yeah, that's why it's good when I wear the over the under kit because it's so bright. I just end up to, you know, having a fair few photos taken on me. I might be out the back, but. Yeah, but then it looks like it looks like you're off the front. It looks like I'm off the so, front. There's no one around me, so that's um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a it's a bit of a bit of a shout out. So I suppose you know we've got a team. So um, you know when we look at there is because it is a national round. Yep. We are looking at a few people coming in. I know um, you know I think Gary's from Sydney. Yeah, Gary's from Sydney. Yeah, Jeff's coming down. Jeff's um, yeah, also Sydney, Sydney as well. Yes, yeah, slash USA. Plus and a the, bunch of guys from Adelaide as well. Yeah, so really we're focused on guys. Yeah. I think a couple of guys coming down from Sydney yeah. as well. So. You know, we're certainly flying from all around. And the other grades, is there anyone to stand out for? I know that we mention him a lot. It's because we love him. He's from uh, Carnegie Cork and then Lee DeLuca. He talks <laughs> a mean game. He spent the last two weeks in a heat camp camping in Bali. Well, it yeah. wasn't secret because he Instagrammed the entire trip, including him falling off a roof. He's, uh, he's just been 
topping up just nicely, and he's dropped out of the league down to Masters too. It's it's, it's very spent, Gregory Thorpe. Very Gregory. It's very Gregory Thorpe. He spent two weeks behind the uh, behind the moped, just topping up that top end speed. He's going to come out absolutely firing. And yeah, he doesn't mind wearing a skin suit no matter what the temperature. And I did read that the gold bar tape would be back as well. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, Paul Vanderpoel. Yeah. So what? How do we reckon about Paul? Like, how do we reckon he'll go? He's obviously he monstered that course. Last year, yeah, he's on the state. If we, if we don't talk about altercation, but he, he's yeah. for and no offense to Paul, for a bigger guy, he's he insane smashes amount of power, insane like amount he, of power. Yeah, just goes straight up that hill. And he's always the only person I think I've ever seen that I've never seen dismount, yeah, at any point, straight up. Well, this weekend they've got these new set of stairs at Fields of Joy, and if you want to go fast on that course, you won't be you won't be riding up them. All right, here we go from Patty again. Who will be the first to ride the new stairs for money and beer? Yeah, so one of the guys, Howie from uh, from Adelaide, put up a slab, and then Fields of Joy have got two hundred fifty bucks for the first person on race day who can ride up them. I don't know if anybody. Do you have to complete the race because I reckon I could probably don a bike and <laughs> just do that once. Only one one person has done it in the practice. That's it. Uh, Jed Hunt. Yeah, yeah, and he had to do it sideways, I think. Yeah, he did. So um, that'll be really interesting. So is there anyone sort of up and coming, you know, B, C grades that have sort of kept people's attention that, you know, that you're like, oh, you know, this person is one to... Because the whole point of having these events yeah, is definitely. not necessarily just for the now. It's yeah. sort of people sort of coming up. Yeah, there's a couple of couple of young guys that are scary fast. One, Anakin, Anakin Williams, he's like... Skywalker. Yeah. <laughs> right? You know who he turned into, right? <laughs> so what's Anakin like? Is he good? He's quick. I don't know, I'm not sure if he's racing this weekend, but uh, he's he's really fast and he's been uh, he's been dominating in, in B grade. So yeah, be interesting to see once he steps up. Um, I suppose what do you want from the fans there? As we sort of you know move a bit forward and you know they're all going to come. It's it's meant to be good weather. It's meant to be cold. It does get a bit windy, but that shouldn't deter you from coming. The course is absolutely insane, especially as it gets chopped up. It's got snow sun, there this time. Sun will be out. Yeah, I think the guys from... Um, we got sand. From uh, right. Speedbuggin um, and Map, they've got Maker there as well. Mm. And serving they did the same coffees. thing, yeah. They had the batch for right there, which was great. How many coffees equal good performance? Two. Any more than that, and it's a uh, it's bad time. But it's, I'll, tell, I'll tell you a story. Uh, before uh, the Albert Park crit um, two years ago, I just started drinking coffee, and I got, went out and had, had a few batch brews with some of the guys, and... On the way to Albert Park, I started getting all dizzy and it was like struggling to ride in a straight line. Then I was like lining up to get my number and I was like, boys, I gotta go. And I had to go on a skew and I couldn't race. <laughs> but you spend all your, every morning I see you I on do now. I've, I've, social I've, media a day I've at a coffee shop. My, I've worked on my caffeine tolerance. Um, who else are you? Blake's in Batch Brew Crew. <laughs> you and hashtag stories from Scott. We might actually make that a thing. Batch Valley. <laughs> um, Andy, I'm here to ask the questions, mate, not answer them. Um, guys, so I suppose, where's the best place to watch? Obviously, there's uh, there's a hill. Have the new jumps gone in at the bottom of that hill? Yeah, so it'll be right. Jeez, they're cruel. They're Cole cruel. and the guys at Sunbury, I'll tell you what, just making it difficult for people. So I think that on the Saturday, the stairs will be at the bottom of the hill and you come sort of run halfway up that 30 degree slope, back down, and then straight back up the steep hill again. So, yeah, it's gonna hurt. I think, is there sand back this year? Yeah, sand's back, and I think we're actually riding uphill on the Sunday. Yeah. Nice. So, so it goes in reverse, the course. Yeah, yeah, oh, so wow, we've got okay. two different courses across the, the different days. And yeah. Right. Do, will that play into the hand? You know, will, do you think that if someone, um, you know, he's more suited to that going to If you go down the hill, oh, that's going to be yeah. nice. <laughs> I don't think we're going to straight Well, they're going to change the course around. Change the whole course, we change it around. Okay, okay, right, right. Um, we spoke about him before. He did win MCLCX, still in Europe. How do you reckon he'll go on this course? Yeah, Dill, he's um, just come out of nowhere. Got a, well, nowhere in the He's CX been good on the road. <laughs> he's very good on the road. He's got a huge tank. Um, he's finally learnt how to glue on his tubs. He rolled quite a few. Caught the Jay Callaghan disease, but uh, no, he's back. Um, you know, with his tubs glued, and I think he'll give it a fair nudge. Um, I suppose. So, do you reckon the best place to watch is sort of on that on that hill, or Definitely would you like do you like everyone being in the one spot, or do yeah. you prefer sort of does it spur you want to get up there? Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. definitely right up the sides of the hill from the bottom to the top. It's great. Uh, from Heath Christie, <laughs> Heath is from St Kilda. He's always at. Um, 
all these events. Thanks for your support for all these CX events. Hey, does Scott think there are too many obstacles for one course? That's a pretty, uh, pretty good question. No, no, because you need different courses. So it, Fields of Joy, everyone knows, is super hard, super, a lot of obstacles, and it, that's just the way it is. Um, I don't think you can have too many. No, you can't. All right. All right, bring it, Cole. Uh, <laughs> so, Cole, um, I don't know what the rules are, so I'm reluctant to ask, but mid beer race handoff or Alan Snakes, which one would you have? Well, you used to... Or Cappy, or Cappy Sparkling Water. Oh, I mean, what's the... Yeah, I love it. I love the Cappy Water. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, beer, beer is really hard to get down mid race. <laughs> well, if you can't even drink coffee, mate. Yeah, I know, no, yeah. No, Alan, Alan Snakes would be good, Ewan. There you go, Ewan. <laughs> so, bring the uh, Alan Snakes. Um... How does it, how does sort of CX, so you, you came off right, you rode, yeah, you I did, before? Oh. I did one, one season of, of crits. Okay, how the, does it, how do you cross. find, is it, how different, A, how different is a training, and B, like, what's a training load, like, is it, is it different, you know, for, um, for like, you know, the impact on your social life, or your work life, do you have to, can you go out and do an hour of CX, and that's equivalent to, you know, three yeah. hours of hard bunching on a road, or? Yeah, so, I only race crits and Crits and cross. I don't. I don't like anything that's longer than an hour. So, <laughs> so in terms of training, like the longest training ride I'll ever do is maybe two hours. So it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't impact. And then a lot of the stuff I do is still on the road. And then I'll do maybe one or two sessions of cross a week. Yeah, guys. If you are new to CX, hit the question. Um, just type a question as to what sort of questions you might have around getting into the sport, which we touched on earlier. But where's your favourite training place? Where would you go to train? CX Wednesdays with Paddy Oliver. Where's so, that? So down under under Westgate Bridge in Westgate Park. So Paddy's a bit of a cross oracle, um, and I, I credit him for actually teaching me how to go around a corner. So yeah, that's at six six oh five on a on a Wednesday night. So if you if you're interested and you want to come work on your skills, come down. And on the weekends, is there any sort of bunch rides that we see like you know? Heaps of bunches going out. Is there any sort of shop ride that sort of takes care of CX, or do you all just go on your merry way? And yeah, I think North City Cycles have just started up a, a CX shop ride. That's on Friday mornings. They have all their um, all the info on their their Instagram. Those guys are big supporters of uh, of CX as well, which is great. Okay, um, what else have we got, Scott? Uh, ben Lane has come in and said, Scott, track races are shorter than both, so obviously better. Ben, I have seen you not finish a couple of track races, so... I like um, posting, so... I think oh, you can track. better keep pedaling. Yeah. Um, thanks very much for all your time. Um, you know, good luck this weekend. Guys, if you are in Melbourne, um, we are... Start, the race starts tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. It's at Essendon Fields, which is in Essendon Airport. You can get there straight through Moody Ponds Essendon Way. You can go straight through the freeway on the way to the airport. Um, thanks very much to Cappy Sparkling, Horvath Financial, V2, um, all the guys here in the studio. You can watch this after. We're going to try and do this every week with a different person. Um, so if you or someone you know that you're interested in telling the story, hit us up in the comments below or shoot us an email or a private message. Um, thanks very much, mate. Thanks, Wilco. Thanks for having me. Cheers.